everyone, I'm Allie with the Potomac Bee Company and I'm going to show you today how to create this Super Duo Pumpkin or Jack-O-Lantern. And it's going to be using two different colors of Super Duos and just Super Duos and some thread. You can also use a head pin or a bale, put some beads um, in between it to kind of keep it puffed out. So you can play around with this. You could even take a cup button in a color and kind of put it on top if you wanted to to make it look like it has a top to the pumpkin. But I think it looks fun as a jack-o'-lantern or you could even make it in a skull by using a white color or a tavertine color and also some jet super duos for the eyes. For this pumpkin here, just because we had a bunch of them on the wall, I'm using the Hyacinth AB. You could use an opaque color as well rather than this translucent, translucent color. For the jet color for the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, I'm using the Jet Matted in the Super Duo. Whatever color you do your pumpkin with or your skull with, you are going to need two tubes of those Super Duos because you're going to burn through uh, more than 14 ounces, which is one tube. So you're going to use about 19 ounces or so, or 19 grams or so, I'm sorry, of the beads that you're working on. So you are going to need two tubes of whatever color you're doing there. You could even get two different colors and mix and match them. That's up to you. For whatever color you're doing for the eyes and the nose and the mouth, you're only going to need one tube because you're only using a few grams of those. Other than the Super Duos, like I said, we're going to be using some thread. The thread that I've chosen to work with here on my little jack-o'-lantern is the .006 Wildfire Beading Thread. And you can use the .006 or the .008 if you're using the Wildfire Selection. Either one will work because you're not doing a lot of weaving in and out of the Super Duos and sharing a lot of thread hole. In addition to that, I'm using a thread burner, and that's going to be to burn that thread off my roll. And then I have a needle nose pliers or a flat nose pliers. Either one will work that you're going to use to help you thread that needle and squash down on the end of that thread to make it fit through the eye better. I am using a size 10 needle and just one for this project. You can have two on hand if you want because the project is actually going to be done in two halves. We're going to do from the eyes and the nose up and then from the nose down to the mouth. So we're going to work on the first top half that we're working with. We're going to do the eyes and the just that really little top section of the nose first is what we're going to be working with. And then the bottom section that will be separate is going to be added later on after the fact. It's two separate sections. The top half is done with eight rows, the bottom half with nine rows. It's the exact same function or the exact same pattern as far as number of beads and ways that you add them. The thing that's going to change is the pattern in which you add the black and the orange in place in order to get your face. To start out, I have a needle that I've threaded and I've only cut about 12 to 16 inches of thread. You are going to want about three feet for your project. This is just for me to keep on focus so I'm not kind of going out of screen a lot with a long piece of thread. I'll add more on as I'm working. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to put eight super duos onto your needle. So these are eight of my orange color and I'm going to put eight on. Again, this is very patternistic and very patterned. And when you're looking at it here, I have the Super Duo Pumpkin Pendant, um, just kind of shorthand, in shorthand instructions. I will include this also at the end of the video so that way you can copy it down. But rows one and two are both going to be done with eight orange Super Duos. And then we move into two rows of 16, two rows of 20, two of 24. That's for the bottom half. Um, and also a third one of 24 for that bottom half. Top half goes just like the lower half, and it's going to go 8, 8, and then 16, 16, 20, 20, 24, 24. And again, it's just the order and the amount of beads that you're going to be changing. I have it written down in both longhand and shorthand, and I'll be going over with it. I'm just going to do in the video the actual top half of the pumpkin that has the eyes and the top nose, because the bottom, like I said, is the exact same just with a different order of beads. Once you do one half of it, the second half will come really, really easily to you. So to start out again, eight beads are on, and they're on my, on my thread, and I'm going to let them drop down till I have about two inches left at the end of the thread, and I'm just gonna tie a knot. So you don't wanna overthink this, you're just gonna tie just a nice overhand knot. Once you have that tied, 
you're going to begin the process of a tubular peyote with super duos. To do that, you're always going to need to step up at the end of each row. So this row here was row one. And to go to row two, I'm going to take my thread and needle coming out of the first hole of the super duo closest to the center. And I'm going to pick up the top hole of that same super duo, but I'm reversing my needle to go in the opposite direction. That's going to expose some thread on the side and that's going to occur at the end of every row. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to add eight more super duos for row two and I'm going to add eight orange super duos. I'm adding a super duo and I'm sewing through the next in line super duo from the pre previous row picking up the second empty hole. So the exterior hole of the first row. And I'm going to add those the whole way around, adding just one at a time. Right here I have four in place. I'm going to continue going the whole way around until I have eight in place. And then we'll do that step up again. But we're adding, we added our original eight and then we're going to add eight more. So I'm coming to the end here and I'm getting ready to add my eighth duo. I'm going to add that last duo sew through the same super duo that my thread was coming out of as well as my first super duo in this second row. So I'm putting on bead number eight and I'm going to sew the whole way through to bead number one. As I step up for my third row, I'm going to take my thread from the bottom hole of one super duo to the top hole of that same super duo. Again, we're going to expose the thread on the side. Give a nice tight pull after each little level to tighten it up. So I have my thread exposed right there on the side. My third row is going to double my second row. So in between each super duo, I'm going to add two duos. So two duos go on my needle and I sew through the next one in line. Again, two duos go on sew through the next one from row two. So as I add row three, I'm gonna be 16 orange super duos that are going on, two between each of the previous row that had eight on it. As I'm finishing up here, I'm going to repeat what I did previously, sewing through both the first bead in row two, as well as the first two that I put on in row three. So I'm going sewing through that first hole of those two beads that I put on. What this is doing is increasing to get my little pumpkin shape. Again, I'm going to step up by taking my needle on the side and going through the top hole of the same super duo that I'm coming out of, which is going to spread out there and it's going to expand those super duos as I pull tight, get me up to that second hole of that super duo from row three. Row four is going to be a repeat of row three, where each bead that I'm putting on, oops, I'm going to put on one super duo at a time, but it's going to be a repeat of my number. I stuck two on there, force of habit. So one bead is going on in between each of my previous row super duo. So previously, I put on 16 beads, and this row as well, I'm going to put on 16 beads. Instead of going two at a time, because I'm not increasing, I'm just doing one at a time. So I'm going the whole way around the row, putting 16 orange beads in place. If you have problems counting or keeping track of your um, numbers, you can always lay out your beads ahead of time. So I would lay out 16 orange beads so I know when I'm done with my rows that my 16 have been used up. But I'm just gonna continue the whole way around here, sewing in this peyote fashion, which is what we're doing, is just to two hold peyote fashion. And I'm adding those 16 beads in place, one in between each bead that was put on from row three. I have 15 beads on here, I'm getting ready to add 16. I'm gonna go through that first bead from row three. And I'm also going to go through the first super duo that I added in the row that I'm working on, row four. As I come through that, I'm going to give a nice tight pull that's going to start to create that dome shape that you're going to get with the pumpkin. I'm going to take my needle then on the side up to the second hole of that same super duo I'm coming out of. Give a nice tight pull. 
And now I'm gonna get ready for row five. Row five is gonna have 20 super duos. It's gonna have 18 orange and two black. So I'm gonna put my two black right there sitting. What this row is gonna do is every fourth time I'm working with it, two beads go on at once. So I'm gonna do a single bead, one, two, three, and then when I get to four, I'm gonna do two beads. Again, one, two, three, fourth, two beads. So I'm gonna start out by adding an orange, a black, an orange, and then two oranges. So an orange goes on, a black bead goes on, an orange bead goes on, and then two oranges. So you're putting two in between that space. So that's my pattern there every fourth time adding two. I'm gonna do the same thing again, doing an orange, black, orange, and then two oranges. So orange goes on. So you can count if it helps you to count one, two, three, and then you know that you have your two on. You can also lay out based on the pattern you can lay your beads out ahead of time. As I'm doing that, I'm giving a nice tight pull. And also when you're following your instructions here, it's gonna have that nicely written out for you. Again, like I said, we're gonna be, it's gonna be written out before, below, but it has that orange, black, orange, two oranges, orange, black, orange, two oranges. So it's that pattern that you're following doing every fourth time. So now again, I'm just gonna continue the pattern, but it's all orange from now on. So I have two more groups of four. I have one, two, three, and then two at a time. And I have to do that one more time. One on at a time for three passes. There's one, two. Just make sure not to get that tail in there. Push that out of the way. Three. And your last two should end up right next to your start. I'm gonna put those two on, sew through the first bead in row four, and then also the first bead that I did in row five here. And I'm gonna turn going back the other way. And there I have that. Row six is gonna repeat with 20 duos. We're going to do 16 orange and 4 black. That's going to help to get us um, our eyes going. So I'm going to start, because we're starting basically in the other way, we're going to have a bunch of orange to put on first, uh, 13 to be exact, and then we're going to put two blue. We're putting one duo in between each bead from row five, so we're not doing any doubling up um, because we have those 20 beads on. So you're just going to go through, going around, putting your pattern. Again, 13 orange go on and then two blue, or two black, then three more orange, then two more of my black to get my eyes. So you're just gonna keep going the whole way around, adding all of these beads in place. I've added 13 of my orange on, and you'll know when to add the blacks in this row here of row six because you're gonna add them on either side of the black one from the previous row. So I have on one there. I'm gonna do one here. And then again, I have three oranges in between. And then I'm gonna add individually. And again, I know when I'm gonna do my black beads because it's gonna be on the sides. And this is gonna get us those points for the eyes. Once I'm next to the black bead from the previous row, I add on a black bead on each side. Oops. Once we get twisted in there. As I add my last black bead, I'm gonna go through the row previous as well as the first bead from this row, that first of the 13 orange beads that I put on. Give a nice tight pull. When you turn it this way, you can see your eyes starting. And I'm gonna take my thread up through that second hole of the last bead that I went on. 
For row seven, we're adding 24 super duos. We're going to be every fifth time two beads go on at once. So like we did in row five, where every fourth bead two goes on, this is gonna be every fifth time two goes on. The pattern when I'm working here is gonna be that I'm putting on an orange bead. And then I'm gonna put on two black beads at once because I'm gonna start in the middle of my pattern. And then I'm gonna add four orange beads for my pattern of four and then two black beads because that would be my fifth rotation or my fifth bead. So one, two, three, we're doing four singles and then a double. And the double on the side again is gonna be where I'm coming out between the two eyes. And that's my fifth time. Again, I'm gonna repeat where I'm going in five groups of five. So four single beads and then a double bead. And these are all gonna be orange. So I get four single orange and then one double orange. So I have the four individuals and the bottom half is exactly like this. I put on two orange at once after when it's my fifth rotation. Give a nice tight pull and then again four singles, one double. And as I work my way around I'm going to get to that portion and that start point where I have my black beads on. So I have my four single beads. Oops. So my four on there, one, two, three, four, adding two orange at one time. And then I'm gonna get ready to add single orange. I'm doing three of those single orange because then that's gonna pick up next to the orange pattern that I started with. I know it's a little confusing because we started kind of in the middle of the pattern, but oops. Once I'm through there, I'm gonna go through the first orange that I put on this row. And just like I've been doing, I'm gonna step up. Row eight, just like the seventh row that we've done, also adds, and there's our little eyes you can see. Row eight is also going to have 24 super duos. It's going to have 23 orange and just one black. The black bead is going to be used, you can see the connection now, the black bead is going to be used to actually connect those two together and be the top of the nose. As I'm going around here, I'm going to be adding one bead between each. When I get in the middle here between the two eyes, that's when I add my black bead. But I'm doing 23 orange the whole way around, going one at a time. And then when I get over here to the middle, I'm going to add my black bead. So it's 21 orange, then one black, and then two more orange. So I'm adding my 21st orange bead. I'm gonna get ready to add my black bead, which is gonna be the top of my nose. Whether or not you do the first portion, the top or the bottom first, it really does not matter. I'm gonna add my last couple orange beads. I've got two orange beads to add. And going through. You can see there my pumpkin taking place. I'm gonna add my last two oranges in place here. One more. And I'm going to do my final step up, which would act like I'm going to get ready to add a ninth row, which I'm really not going to do. So I'm stepping up, and instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my two pieces together. So there are my eyes and my top of my nose. My bottom section, I've already done and set aside. So depending on which section you do first, bottom or top, you're just gonna sit whatever section aside and move to the other one. Again, there's very detailed instructions about which beads you put on in which location and in which order, and we'll have those down at the bottom for you. 
Once you have that, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to seam them together. I've kept the two pieces with different colored threads, so I did the bottom portion here with black, and I've done the top with white. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be seaming these two pieces together, so that way we get our little pumpkin there. I'm going to pick our pumpkin up here from the top, and I'm right at the end when I start. I'm right at the end here. And what I want to do is I want to line my pumpkin up one side to the other. I'm going to start sewing back and forth and zigzagging, creating a line to catch the two beads together, or to put the two beads together. So I have those two pieces that I'm sewing together, just going up and down between my empty super duos. Row, the bottom section has nine rows, whereas the top has eight. And that allows you an uneven amount here to seam together. And as you go around, you're just gonna go back and forth, adding the beads in place between. And I'm just sewing back and forth between the two. It's a little tricky to hold on to at first. So if you need to, you can just kind of push your things down out of the way. I feel like a surgeon here sewing up together. But I'm just gonna push those super duos up to the top, go the whole way around. Once you have your nose piece in, in play here, it's easier to keep track of where you are because then the rest is just seaming it all together. Once you have that laying and you've gone through them all, you're gonna continue sewing the whole way around your little jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. When you get to a point that you have the two threads kind of coming together, so I have my lower thread and my upper thread that are coming together, I'm just gonna to try to push that lower thread down so that way my upper thread is not getting in the way. But you can see here I'm stitching her together and getting that pattern. So I'm just going past that point where the two threads meet. And I'm gonna continue doing my little surgery here and stitching those two threads together. When you get to the end of the seam up process, all you're gonna do is seam those last two little pieces together. A cute idea if you want, you can even keep a little section open of this that you could put candy inside. Um, but what you can do also is make this look like a skull. You could do white with the black, so you can play around with colors. Um, but once you are finished with it, all you're gonna do is reinforce that thread. Again, once we finish seaming, we're basically just gonna reinforce. And I wanna get rid of all of these threads that are still hanging out here. I have my thread at the top from my original eight beads that I've added, those original, original eight. I also have the original eight at the bottom of my piece. And I did choose to do the bottom in a black thread just because you so you could see the kind of opposite and where they connected. So I have my bottom in black and the top in white. And what I'm gonna do is get rid of these threads. Whether or not you wanna just add a dab of glue and then do a little burn, like I'm gonna do here, and just burn off some of those ends, that's up to you. You can also take your thread and you can tie off the two pieces together. So I can take this thread here and I can back through my piece. I can go the whole way around if I want. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a bead and then I wanna come out between the bead. Once I'm through, I'm gonna go back the opposite direction. And this is going to kind of seam up those two also from the bottom row to the top row. I'm gonna work my way the whole way around till I get to the starting th or the ending thread of the black one. And again, it's gonna reinforce kind of that whole middle. Just like I did with the last row where I was seaming it up, I'm just going right along the line, whole way around, pulling those beads as I go. My needle's getting a little bent up, so bear with me. You can always go in with needles too and you can flatten them back out. So I'm sewing the whole way through. And again, I'm gonna work my way over 
and it seems to be two at a time is working the best. Whole way over to the black beads. Or the black thread, sorry. Like I said, a friend had a good idea of keeping this open in a section and just kind of sewing 11 O seed beads in between rather than sewing the two super duos together. And that would make it almost like a little pouch that you could put candy in or a little surprise. But I'm sewing the whole way back through here. And then all I'm going to do is once the threads are next to one another, coming out here, I'm going to knot those two threads together. So I have the two threads coming out on the side of the same super duo. And that way I can easily disguise that knot. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot and get rid of those. Again, if you want to, you can super glue or you can just burn those two threads together, fuse them together and burn them down, which is what I'm going to do. And thread burner is a great little tool. So all I have yet to do is just to burn the top of my bead down there. If you do want to keep it so that it's not having kind of that squishy effect, I think the squishy effect is kind of fun. You can even stick, if you're using opaque beads, you can stick a little cotton in between there. You could also sew some little crystals for the center of the eyes if you wanted to get it blingy. You could do that as well. Drop a head pin through with just a small orange bead at the bottom and you can hang it. So there's a bunch of different uses what you can do with your little jack-o'-lantern pen in here. But have fun, you can use this idea, like I said, to make a skull, to make other rounded sort of objects, just playing around with the pattern and how you're getting the different beads that are in play. So tis the season to kind of play around with the pumpkin and the jack-o'-lantern and have fun making that. You can do ghosts, you can kind of play around with all those different beads. And again, if you do have the effect that you're looking for with the jack-o'-lantern, this one's fun by adding the two beads for the fourth row and, and such, having that pattern going on. So while you're working and having fun making these, have other um, ideas in mind. You can do Easter eggs and do a pattern with that. We'll have one of those coming out a little bit later on doing that as well. So just two super duos, some thread and a needle, and you can have a fun jack-o'-lantern like this. If you want some other jewelry ideas or tips or want to watch some other videos, you can check out the rest of our YouTube videos. You can also like us on Facebook and follow the different posts that we have with new products and different videos that we're doing there as well. Subscribing to the YouTube channel is always a great idea too because then you'll get updates when we do fun new videos like the jack-o'-lantern as well as others. If you get a chance, visit us online at potomacbeads.com. We'd love to see you in one of our locations that you can check out where they are on that page. And always, if you need materials and you can't get to one of our locations, you can shop with us online and we'd be happy to ship out anything that you need. Thanks a lot for watching and have fun making a little fun little jack-o'-lantern.